is the emergence of a brand new infection, likely jumping species from an animal that's respiratory born, highly transmissible with a high degree of morbidity and mortality. And lo and behold, that's where we are right now. So it's not going to disappear from the planet, which means as we get into next season, in my mind, it's inevitable that we will have a return of the virus, or maybe it never even went away. When it does, how we handle it will determine our fate. If by that time we have put into place all of the countermeasures that you need to address this, we should do reasonably well. If we don't do that successfully, we could be in for a bad fall and a bad winter. Let's bring in Dr. Jeremy Faust. He is an emergency room physician at Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital and teaches at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Faust, good evening. Hello. Why, is, why are so many doctors, first of all, including Dr. Fauci, so convinced that it's an inevitability, in his words, that this virus returns in the fall? Viruses are very seasonable, seasonable in terms of summer, winter, fall. It has to do with the environment around us. So we know that we all have the experience of, of fall and winter being the season where we have flus. So the fact that not every single human being on the planet has been exposed to this virus means that we expect it will level off to some degree over the summer and then it will have a resurgence in the fall and winter. The question is how low can we possibly get this summer and fall as a starting point? What level are we beginning from? Are we beginning from an ongoing crisis, which, which very well could be the case, or are we beginning from nothing, which will be much better? Well, the CDC director has also warned that it could coincide with the height of flu season. How do we prepare? How do our hospitals prepare for the fall? One thing we absolutely have to do is to realize that the, when more patients come to us with critical illness, we need to have the medications ready that we know work. Obviously, right now, there's no proven drug that helps for coronavirus, and we are waiting for one to show us any real benefit. But there are things when patients need to be put on mechanical ventilators, paralytic drugs, and sedative medications, and also antibiotics if there's bacterial infection in addition to the viral infections, which we do commonly see. And I'm, the one thing we could really do is to make sure that our drug shortages are dealt with now. The president has enormous power. There's been a lot of talk about what the president's role can be with states and other arguments. This is one area where it's very clear. The president can use the Defense Production Act to really amp up that pipeline so that when we do have a resurgence of any kind of illness related to this condition, that we're ready to do everything we can on the front line to help them. There are so many clinical trials going on right now. I hear about a new one every single day. What is the likelihood that come fall we do have an effective either treatment or mix of treatments to help better manage this pandemic? The thing that's going to get us through this is a vaccine, and as we all know, that's not coming soon enough. So the question is, will any of these drugs actually play out in a real clinical trial with actual control groups and blinding and all the things you need so that you know that the data that you're looking at is not just noise? I think that we're probably going to find a few things that work a little bit, but I don't think that there's going to be a game-changing medication in terms of taking this this, this crisis and just making it go away overnight. We know what that is. That's a vaccine when it, if and when it's proven to be effective. But medications that slow down virus, it takes so long to get the right combination. With HIV AIDS, it took years and years of medications that we knew worked, but we just didn't know how they worked together and what combination. And then it took another medication class to kind of come in and save the day. And that really changed the tide of the HIV uh, issue in the 90s. We don't have that now. And so first, we don't know what works. And second, we don't know what works together. So I'm, I'm not optimistic that we'll find a magic bullet that is on the level of a vaccine, not a magic bullet that will make this crisis feel any different. It might make a small difference. In the meantime, so many states are looking to reopen. Many of them have already done so. Are you comfortable with this? I would be very concerned if I was in a state that was reopening right now. We're all very eager to get back to regular life. I definitely understand that. 
Right now, we're seeing something that's unprecedented in American history, as far as I can tell, and that is that not just are there a lot of coronavirus deaths, the total number of deaths is up in this country. And that's called, that's a, a concept called excess or extra mortality. Every week in my city or your state or in the whole country, compared to the the, that same week for years and years, for decades, the number of expected deaths is pretty stable, very remarkably stable. The data is very good. And we are now seeing for the first time many, many states saying there's just more deaths, period. And even and we know that they're from coronavirus, but you can't fudge the fact that there are just simply a lot more deaths. And we never see that even in a bad flu season. We don't see anything on the scale that we're seeing today. So I would want to see that go away. I need to know that we are at least close to normal with respect to our just regular number of deaths that, that come and go, cancer, heart attack, old age. But if we are, at New York is double, triple, quadruple, and even more, that, that's a very bad situation. Team, subscribe for more of these type of videos.